here we are from Rekka, and we're in a high school. Where's the, uh, where's the zoo? The is it this it the so zoo? Just, uh, get ready to take it and pass it around, and, and, and you oh, yeah. use your little okay. camera yeah. today. And then Louise, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna film something. Now, stand yourself straight now. <laughs> Roll. To me, abuse means malicious activity. Actually, uh, elders, when uh, at certain age, they they lose their control, and uh, the that control make them the losing that control make them very vulnerable in 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 their home. That is that is a very difficult part for senior to. To, to accept because of the whole life they are in their own control. And elder abuse is a crime and elder abuse doesn't start as an mm -hmm. act that's in a crisis situation. You have to be able to prevent it and how do you prevent it? You work with the community. Nobody wants to talk about it. They say no, it's not in my community. What we do is to um, demonstrate by using um, non-verbal, non-threatening technique of bringing this uh, awareness, showing them about what LED abuse is all about. Uh, in terms of Rekha's role in uh, recognizing abuse, abuse in any shape or form or mistreatment, like from lack of respect, we have to know we have to identify the abuse, or whether you call it abuse or maltreatment. Why it occurs is important, and how it should be solved is important. But I think for us, the beginning thing is that we have to recognize abuse does exist in all communities, and including ethnocultural communities. I'd like to make that point very, very clear. It's la sensibilisation. Pour moi, c'est surtout la sensibilisation envers la situation que vivent nos aînés, les aînés immigrants, et aussi et la prévention, la prévention, l'information. This is the first year we said we wanted a workshop that was a safe place for elders to come and talk about this. What did they think was happening to them? What were the issues when you hear the word abuse? Le théâtre qui n'a pas de paroles. Et je pense que ça euh, traverse les frontières de la langue et ça va rejoindre beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup du monde. On fait des ateliers recueils, c'est un autre organisme. Et après les ateliers, même plus tard, tu commences à recevoir des appels des personnes qui ont été dans cet atelier et qui viennent parce que tout à coup, ils savent qu'il y a une amie qui vit telle situation ou dans la famille, eux-mêmes, ils vivent telle situation. Alors ils vont parler. La grande différence, c'est que les aînés des communautés culturelles sont beaucoup plus fragiles. Parce qu'il faut ajouter eh, l'élément eh, immigration. But Ethel, I met Ethel at the Council of Black Aging, and she invited me to Rekka. And with my experience with the elderly, I thought it would be a good thing for me to continue working with the elderly. That's my most gratifying for me is going into a multicultural community and being accepted now and being understood. And when they see the lot of us, all different nations working together that, and doing the same thing, it opens doors that would have never opened before. We have to really work together in order to make this silent story come alive. And, and it always amazes me every time we do it how alive it becomes. And then to get the response from the audience to, to see, did we really get across?